Welcome everybody. Thanks for showing up. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance by Paul Correa. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Now I'll do the national anthem, and this will be done by Catherine Van Dyne, the proud daughter of a Marine veteran, Tom DeLuca. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleam? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight all the ramparts we held were so gallantly streamed and the rockets reclaimed the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that her flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Now Bill Wilson of the BFW and the American Legion will lead us in prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mankind and judge over nations, we pray thee to guide our work in this meeting and in all our days. Send thy peace to our nation and to all nations. Hasten the fulfillment of thy promise of peace that shall have no end. We pray for those who serve the people and guard the public welfare, that by thy blessing they be enabled to discharge their duties honestly and well. We pray for our comrades, that by thy help they observe strictest justice. Keep alight the fires of freedom strive earnestly for the spirit of democracy, and prepare untarnished our loyalty to our country and thee. Finally, O God of mercy, we ask thy blessing and comfort for those comrades who are suffering mental and physical disability. Cheer them and bring them the blessing of health and happiness. Amen. Now I have the reading of the Governor's Proclamation by John Dunahy, the VFW Post 8049 Commander. A proclamation. Whereas, since the Commonwealth's colonial days, thousands of men and women have served our country in defense of freedom and liberty. And whereas on November 11th, 1918, the armistice was signed in the forest of Campaign by the Allied Nations and Germany, ending World War I. 
the war to end all wars. After four years of conflict and whereas since that day, every November, people from around the nation have gathered to honor our veterans and whereas there are approximately 38, 388,000 veterans living in Massachusetts and whereas today we are reminded of the great sacrifices and the contributions of our veterans have made to our country and whereas we honor and salute those who served our country throughout the generations with honor, patriotism, and courage. And whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who served their country so that their dedication and sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. And whereas in November 2020, the world will commemorate the 102nd anniversary of the armistice that ended the fighting in World War I at 11 o'clock a.m. November 11th, 1918. The 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Now, therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the, Massachusetts, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim November 11th, 2020, to be Veterans Day and urge all of the citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance. Given, the, given at the Executive Chamber in Boston this 11th day of November in the year 2020 and of the independence of the United States of America, the 244th by Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. God save the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Veterans message. We left home as teenagers for an unknown adventure. We loved our country enough to defend it, protect it with our own lives. We said goodbye to friends and family and everything we knew. We learned the basic and then we scattered in the wind to the far corners of the earth. We found new friends and new family. We became brothers and sisters, regardless of color, race, or creed. We had plenty of good times and plenty of bad times. We didn't get enough sleep. We smoked and we drank too much. We picked up both good and bad habits. We worked hard and played harder. We didn't earn a great wage. We experienced the happiness of mail call and the sadness of missing important events. We didn't know when or even if we were ever going to see home again. We grew up fast and yet somehow we never grew up at all. We fought for our freedom as well as the freedom of others. Some of us saw actual combat. Some of us did not. Some of us saw the world. Some of us did not. Some of us dealt with physical warfare. Most of us dealt with a psychological warfare. We have seen and experienced and dealt with things that we can't fully describe or explain, as not all of our sacrifices were physical. We participated in time-honored ceremonies and rituals with each other, strengthening our bonds and camaraderie. We counted on each other to get our job done and sometimes to survive it all. We have dealt with victory and tragedy. We have celebrated and mourned. We lost a few along the way. When our adventure was over, some of us went back home, some of us started somewhere new, and some of us never came home at all. We have told amazing and hilarious stories of our exploits and adventures. At least to us, they are amazing 
and hilarious. We share an unspoken bond with each other that most people don't experience and few will understand. We speak highly of our branch of service and poke fun at the other branches. We know, however, that if needed, we will be there for our brothers and sisters and stand together as one in a heartbeat. Being a veteran is something that had to be earned and it can never be taken away. It has no monetary value, but at the same time, it is a priceless gift. People see a veteran and they thank them for their service. But at least in my case, the gift of service was to myself. When we see each other, we give that little upwards head nod or a slight, slight smile, knowing that we have shared and experienced things that most people have not. So for myself, to the rest of the veterans out there, I commend and thank you for all that you have done and sacrificed for your country. Try to remember the good times and forget the bad times. Share your stories, but most importantly, stand tall and proud if, because you have earned the right to be called a veteran. Okay, we do the bagpipes, the Armed Forces Medley, the Sergeant Jacob Dennett, Norton Police Department.
Thank you. At this time, I'd like to introduce a veteran activist, 30 year retired Air Force Colonel Julie Hall. Thank you. Thank you to all the veterans that are out there and all the, um, I'm sure your town officials and the fire department, the police department, everybody that's here to help celebrate the veterans. I'm going to take this off because I can. Um, and I appreciate that. I've done a lot of work with the veterans over here in Norton and around the area. I'm a retired Air Force Colonel. I have 30 years of active duty. I'm very proud of that, and I'm still very active in the community and with veterans all the, all the time. With the police department, the fire department, anybody that wears a uniform and has the job of going about protecting us, I always have you six, all the time. You know, on this Veterans Day, I think it's the first time I've said this, I'm sad for America. As a society, I think that we have lost our way. We have found ourselves looking for reasons to tear things down, but not building new memories and dreams. It is because of our freedoms and protections of our rights that we are allowed not only to dream our dreams, but to have the opportunity to see them come to life. We have the right to change our dreams when we hit a brick wall. Because in America, there are many pathways to opportunity for those that are willing to see those trails ahead. And those who are brave enough to walk them alone, away from the popular protest to develop and get excited about our own thoughts. I often wonder how young people really feel about the importance of their freedoms and their personal rights. It's unfortunate that this question will only be answered when they are taken away. And I hope that we never see that day. I believe more than ever, veterans need to stand up for our freedoms we need to draw the line, and we need to be able to defend that line. We have to be willing to stand up and defend that line. We are veterans, and more than others, we have been entrusted to carry a passion for this country so strong in our hearts. For all the veterans who continue to serve and for those who have served this country, let that passion continue to burn. Let it burn so bright that those who have lost their way can follow that light back to the freedom and the greatness of our beloved America. I want to thank everybody for allowing me to speak here today. God bless all of you, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. At this time, too, I'd like to... Veterans Community Update. We'd like to take a moment to remind Norton veterans and their families that we are always here to support them, especially during the COVID. Please reach out, reach out to our Veterans Office and our American Legion, VFW. We are here to help no matter your question or need. Also remember that the Norton VFW Post 8049 
and the American Legion Post 222 are still taking applications for new members. These organizations provide a great opportunity for veterans to come together and support one another. Our Veterans Council is currently selling a limited amount of tickets for a Cape Cod getaway to raise funds for future veteran events. You can contact myself, Paul Correa, Stahl Flat, Bill Wilson, and we also have started working on a Memorial Day 2021 with some special dedications planned that will ensure we never forgetting those POW and MIA military personnel who gave so much. Stay safe and celebrate today your service to our great nation. At this time, I'd like to welcome Town Manager Mike Units, Selectman Jack Conway, Mike Tool, the Norton Fire Department, Norton Police Department, and uh, everybody else. I hope I didn't forget anybody. Now we have a salute by the Norton Police Honor Guard team. Sergeant Jacob Dennett, North Police Department, would do God Bless America. I'm sorry, Amazing Grace.
America and have a nice Veterans Day. And this is the conclusion of our Veterans Day service. Thank you.